you're up before the sun, the men and women we count on every day. And when you need us most, your Carolina Ford dealers are here for you. Discover what it means to be true blue. For great offers on a new Ford truck or SUV, see your Carolina Ford dealer today. Hello, everyone, and welcome to my Plus Size Grandma podcast reality show with Miss Coco Bowden. I meant to say reality show podcast. Ah, let's see here. Y'all, I was just looking through the Facebook Facebook, and I saw this article. And y'all know how we are about articles over here now. Now we really in the articles. Like, we talk about things that's already reported out there. You know, taking the focus off me. But I saw this article that says sports legend Bo Jackson awarded $21 million after allegedly being harassed and extorted by his family. Now, <laughs> I think one of the reasons why this caught my eye was because when they said family. And I think that, um, y'all, I'm just diving right on into it because I've been holding this in for the longest. But I, I think what really got my eye was the part that they said he was... He sued his family, and at first I was like, why would anybody want to sue their family? And then I got to thinking that, do you know how difficult family really is in these days? Family can really be like, family can really do some really outrageous, crazy, hurting, hurting, disheartening, delusional things. They can really put a number on you till you just lose it. And rather than losing it, Bo Jackson said, well, you know what? I'm going to sue him. They was harassing him. They were threatening to put out here all this information on his medical reports. You know, any, any information they had on him that was private, they were going to expose it to social media. And y'all know that ain't nothing but blackmail right there. And I noticed that it's a lot of that going on these days where somebody blackmails somebody so that they can have their way and think people are not saying nothing just because you family. Well, I'm glad that Bo stood up for himself. And I don't care what anybody thinks about it, but I feel like this. If family is that rude and and mean enough to want to sue you for being you and going through the things you go through in life, yeah, you got a right to stand up for yourself. You have a right to go back at them. If if what they're doing is wrong, yeah, get them. Correct them. So Bo decided to hit their pockets. See, they were trying to hit his pocket for 20 mil. Then he came back and got them back. Now, it wasn't really a tick for tat because... What they were doing was showing up at places that he was going and um, where he was holding out outreach programs. They were showing up there, and he, eventually he started fearing for his life, and that's why he was like he had to do something about it. Now, they can't, since this ruling has came down, they can't even come around him like that. But, y'all, let's read this article. This article going to tell you more about it. And this article is coming out of foxnews.com. Bo Jackson awarded $21 million in extortion case against niece and nephew. Bo still hits hard, his attorney said. All right. Let's keep going here. I'm trying not to get knocked off, y'all. Former superstar athlete Bo Jackson was awarded $21 million in a civil case against his niece and nephew, who he says were blackmailing and stalking him. Didn't I tell y'all that stalking is real in the black community? Didn't I tell y'all that? I have been saying this since 2022 when I realized it was happening to me. See, but people like me can't say that because if I say that, I look delusional. Now, Bo is saying that, and he took it all the way to court, and he's going to get paid for what they're doing to him. Okay, let's keep reading. The lawsuit filed in April alleged that Thomas Lee Anderson and his sister Erica M. Anderson Ross 
try to extort 20 million from the pro bowler baller and mlb all-star through harassment and intimidation jackson claimed the harassment started in 2022 and included threatening social media posts and messages public allegations that put him in a false light and public disclosure of private information intended to cause him severe emotional distress. Now, who? They just said a lot right there. Having said that, reading that, I'm going to tell y'all something. You better be careful what you put about people on Facebook. Because you can get in trouble for it. And I'm I'm talking to myself too, because sometimes I can get upset and I be wrote something right quick and I had to take it down. But most of the time, it be somebody seen it, even if it don't be but one or two people. Somebody already be seen it, and so these social media allegations that they were fitting to put out on him is is the basis of this case, and this is what got them found guilty of the stalking and intimidation and the blackmailing, extortion, all that stuff put together. So what you put out here on social media, don't think that it can't be brought back up in court. And I'm glad that he sheds light on this because there's so many people out here now that are getting bullied on social media. And that's where I come in at with this article because family can, can bully you on social media and all they got to do is keep liking your stuff. That's all they got to do. Letting you know that they're watching you. And I suspect that's probably what they did to him too. You know, just went on there, just running their mouth. Because there was there was a post that was on social media. I don't know if it's going to cover it in this article. But when I studied f- further on down, it was a post that was put up by Mr. Anderson. Thomas. Thomas Lee Anderson. Let's keep reading. Okay. They also threatened to appear at and disrupt a charity event hosted by Jackson near him, his alma mater, Auburn University. The Andersons then asked for money in exchange for them ending their conduct. Why should he have to pay you grown people to act like you are human? That is the most ridiculous thing. They wanted to get paid to act like they was, you know, decent people. Ain't nobody finna pay y'all to be decent. You know who you are. If you evil, you just evil. But ain't nobody finna pay you so you can pretend like you good. All right, let's keep reading. Jax's niece and nephew were also ordered to stay at least 500 yards away from the ex-running back and outfielder. And they are not allowed to contact Jackson or any of his immediate family members. Unfortunately, for those attempting to extort $20 million from Jackson and his family, both still hits hard. Jackson's attorneys, Robert Ingram and David Coley, Conley said Monday in a news release about the case. Jackson was the first overall pick in the 1986 NFL draft by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, but he opted to play baseball and sign with the Kansas City Royals. However, when Los Angeles Raiders own Al Davis was interested in allowing him to play both baseball and football. Jackson joined the Raiders the following year. His NFL career ended after he dislocated a hip during the playoffs of the 1990 season. He did, however, continue playing baseball until 1994. He had a career .250 average and .783 ops. And that's all they have on this article. Now, I wonder just what made, I mean, what made his family go after him like that? Is it just that they were sitting around broke and was jealous? It had to be jealousy. It had to be that they were jealous that he had this money and and they probably were sitting around and just 
looking at it and feeling like they're entitled to what he has. Because I'm going to tell y'all something. You do have some family members out there that feel like whatever you have is theirs. And they feel like they deserve half of what you got because they think that if you just speak to them, that you owe them just for speaking to them. Dysfunctional families operate just like a cult. In the mind, because it's so enmeshed, they feel like whatever one has, that's what everybody has. And that's so far from the truth. If I work for it, that money mine. If we ain't in on it on a contract, that money mine. Now, if we say this is a group thing, this is a family thing, let's all chip in and do this and do that, that, that's a different story. But when this is hard-earned money that he has made and they coming for it, they so wrong on that on so many levels. Now, jumping down to a small level, small family levels. Now, I know that's that's a um, big amount of money right there, $21 million. But let's say that what if it happened in your family? How would this look in your family coming from an average family household, you know, Average siblings, um, most of the households have, what, five to six children for big families. And then you got um, the working parents and grandparents in there, the aunts and uncles. Now, just saying, what if that was you? One of the six kids made it big because they really worked hard. They studied they really got out here and, you know, they they estranged themselves in order to become successful. They had to just separate away because what, what was going on in the family hood, it was not working for them. And they knew if they stayed in the family system close-knit like that, that they couldn't achieve the heights that they wanted to achieve. So what they did, they didn't say, you know, I'm doing away with family. They just said, well, I got to separate myself while I build my empire. And so when they separate, the family gets jealous, mad, evil-hearted, bitter, because that could have been me, or why they go? It ain't going to work out good for them. You know, just a lot of negativity and bitterness coming out from the ones who didn't want to try to become better. Just jealous because they didn't want to try to do anything. They wanted everything given to them or they wanted others to work for it and they take it. And so now this person who's made it big, he's got all this money and he's enjoying his life. That's one of the six kids. The problem is the family system is so dysfunctional. They feel like he owes them. Just because he made it to the height that he made it. Mind you, they didn't do none of the work. They didn't even support his vision or dream. Now, I'm just saying this for the average family. I'm not saying that's what happened with Bo Jackson there. Because that's probably not how that happened. But I'm just saying, you know, what if that, that thing was true about, you know, in somebody else's family that may not have as much income or popularity as Joe Jackson. I mean, Bo Jackson. Why am I saying Joe as Bo Jackson? In a regular family, you would have probably one or two of the siblings that really support that sibling that went off on their own. And the rest of them would still be sitting back looking bitter and jealous. And they would feel entitled and like they were owed some money just for being related. Who am I kidding, y'all? I've, I've been around people like that. <laughs> I've been around people like that. And I tell you, that sucks when you see families go down the rabbit hole like that. Because they don't want to grow, but they don't want nobody else growing either. They don't want you to grow either. They they are perfectly fine staying where they're at. But if you even attempt to look like you're growing, that's when they come out with the false accusations. Who else do we know is like this? People with narcissistic personality disorders. Right? The moment they see you glowing and flourishing out there, and not it's not even that you're rich at the time because you're struggling to get where you are, but the point is you're getting there. And they're still, still sitting back talking about how you're not going to make it. But you're making it every step of the way. With well, those of you who go through that type of ridicule and dysfunction, 
you know, I'm telling you, you keep going, you keep doing, you break that family cycle because that family cycle, it, it flows for generations and generations. And somebody has to come in there and say, Hey, we do got some real winners in our family. And we don't have to stay connected every day to make a, make it, you know, to have a flourishing life, a prosperous career. You don't have to stay up under your family to do that. And once you do that, you're not entitled to give away what you have made. Now, if not, not in your heart and you got a big heart and you love people, you love your family. Yeah. You will come back and support the system in a good way that you could. But you you don't have to. And if you don't, it shouldn't be a problem. Now, something happened here in the Jackson family where the Andersons felt like they was entitled to what Jackson had. And if he didn't give it to them, they were going to tell all they knew about him, his career, his medical aspects. And that's not right. So y'all tell me what y'all think about it in the chat. Because I, I really think that, I mean, do y'all think that he should have got that much money off his family? I mean, that's his family. I mean, we're not knowing if they are rich or poor or what. But do y'all think he should have sued his family back? Because I do. I think he should have. And they were intimidating him, trying to hurt him, trying to hurt his character, trying to hurt his body. Come on now, causing emotional distress. Yeah, he, he, he deserved that. And I think it's high time that we make examples of family members who want to continue doing evil because it could have been worse, y'all. It really could have. Look how many families, family members that are incarcerated for often their family members. You know, they wanted what they had. And so instead of just acting, they went and took through means of decease. You know what I'm saying? I can't put it out there like that. But they got rid of their family member to try to get their riches. They care nothing about the family member. We have to think that we're in 2024 and people no longer operate off of love. And I, and they never, some of them re really never did. But now they're more, more bolder with it because it's more people being bold about how they don't support family systems and how they don't care anything about love. And, and especially now we're finding out that a lot of black people do not even believe in God. And just when you thought that everybody was a Baptist or a Methodist, you're finding out that there's all these other religions out here. Well, a lot of them out here. And most of the time, a lot of them don't believe in God, so you don't know where they're standing. Before, they never said it. Now, they're boldly saying it. What God? I don't believe in God. Boldly saying it. So, it's a lot to unpack there. And I, I, would, I wish they could have went more into details because I did look around for more articles and more videos to see if I could find more details of exactly what were they trying to say. And that part was not released y'all. Cause I was trying to find that. I was wanting to know what, what, oh, what was the intimidations, you know, that they did, but they only posted so much out there about this and he did get his win. Let me see here. If I got some more, um, uh, I had screenshotted some, Let's see. Harassment and extorted family members. Just imagine being harassed by your own family. You want to know what that feels like? It sucks. Because most likely he did care about his family and just never thought they'd do him like that. Harassment by family. It's like trying to fit where you'll never belong. You never belong there. No matter what you do for them, no matter how good you've been to them, because harassment is in a person's heart. That's called bitterness. That's called hate. If they got the nerve to harass you, they hate you. Yeah. 
They hate you. When they're harassing you, letting you, you know that they're stalking you. And many people don't realize that there's all forms of stalking. And when you get cyber stalking, yeah, they try to let people know everything about you on the slide, but in a way where they don't look like they're doing any harm. But that's why I'm so glad that Bo Jackson actually won this lawsuit because stalking is part of bullying. And they were using social media to bully him. And it's like this. If I can't get you one way, I'm going to get you another way. So they know that, that rumor can spread really fast through social media. Whether it's the truth or lies. If it hits social media, it's all over the world. Yep. It don't matter if it's the truth or a lie. Once it goes onto those airways... Somebody is going to pick it up somewhere, even if it wasn't on their loan. So harassment can come through cyberbullying. And how do you harass somebody through cyberbullying? It's like I said, you can go on a person's page or you can make fake pages and go on their page and put a whole bunch of negative posts underneath everything that they write or post. You're just steady commenting negative and harassing gestures and comments let me see if i could pull something up on that so that i can um let's see uh let's see if we can pull something up while i'm talking about it uh but you're stalking their pages and you know you know you stalking their their pages Oh, let's see. Cyber harassment usually pertains to unconsented conduct such as threatening or harassing email, instant messages, or to blog entries or websites dedicated solely to tormenting an individual. Okay, I found something here. So the definition... Let me read this. This is coming from the Dean of Students at MTU.edu. Cyber harassment. Some liken the Internet to the Wild West with no enforceable rules of conduct or behavior. However, it is important to keep in mind that any behavior constituting stalking or harassment in real life does not become acceptable if it occurs online. So the definition of cyber stalking and cyber harassment as adapted from National Conference of State Legislators follows. Cyberbullying is a term generally limited to interactions among minors. But now we have to look at it with adults too. Cyber stalking, the use of internet, email, or other electronic communications to stalk, generally refers to a pattern of threatening or malicious behaviors, including communicating a credible threat or harm. Cyber harassment differs from cyber stalking in that it is generally defined as not involving a credible threat. Cyber harassment usually pertains to unconsented conduct, such as threatening or harassing email, instant messages, or to blog entries or websites dedicated solely to tormenting an individual. Harassment does not include constitutionally protected activity or conduct that serves a legitimate purpose, free speech. Now, I'm going to tell y'all, and I hope that they include this someday to the laws and legislations, and I want to write something about it, you know, cyber harassment and stalking, because I go through something that... Um, I don't know if it's the same thing as what he was going through, but just bouncing away from his, his case for just a second that I want to include the cyber harassment can be also when a person repeatedly does a thing or a group of people do the same thing to let you know that they're watching you. And in my case, I go through sometimes the cyber harassment for me is like sometimes I'll go on TikTok or Facebook. And if I go on the lives of somebody's live, it'll come, um, 
they get a notification that I'm on there and that I'm a threat. And so the people are notified in advance what to do. Like, say, for instance, if I got certain things in my home, they'll set their home up to look like my home. And they'll go to that designated area so that when I come on live, that I will see that. And that's a form of harassment, and it's set out to be triggering for me. Um, they will wear the same color lipstick I have on. I have had some that have went out and brought the same clothes. And, I mean, in one day, you could just see the same people in the same clothes. And now I'm going to tell you this part, too. Now, this is an algorithm as well because whoever works behind whatever is behind it, in the social media algorithms, they can set the algorithm up on my page where that's all I will see is people that's dressed in the same thing that I dress in, you know, using the same foods and utensils that I use. Or they can show images of people who got the same body type as I got, and that's harassment. Now, I guess you're wondering, how is that harassment? Because you would have to live in my position to understand how that works psychologically. Now, you wouldn't normally go on the internet and find somebody who's looking like you and dressing like you. And, um, it's certain words that can be said as well that let you know that they're directing this to you. And it's a bad feeling because it, it's kind of like gaslighting because the people who do it, you don't know if they know what they're doing or not, but you just know that it's gearing toward you. That's just like, um, say for instance, if you go to a store and all these shoppers, you know, the stores are empty and nobody's there. And then all of a sudden, all these people show up at this store. And you're like, God, nobody was here a while ago, but now the store is packed. It's because it's a form of intimidation. Everybody gets a notification that says, hey, our subject is at this store. Let's go in there as many people as we can get to go and intimidate her. Meanwhile, it looks like they're just shopping. But they're not. And it's harmful because it does cause emotional distress. Now, bouncing back to Bo Jackson, that's how he could have got emotional distress. Because, you know, just worrying about, you know, are they really going to come up and hurt me? Are they going to make good on their threats? Are they, do they have people working with them? He doesn't know for sure. But he knows emotionally that's a pain. So, yeah, he should have got his $21 million. And I'm glad they made an example out of his family that you just can't go around threatening and stalking people just because you're related. You got to grow up sometimes. Once you grow up, you realize there are consequences to your actions. And I feel like they got just what was coming to them because the Andersons should have stayed in place. They should have, they should have remained, you know, humble and, and just out of his business. If they didn't like him, just stay out of his business. Stay away from him. I mean, I don't understand why families can't do that. If you don't get along with one another, just stay away. Nobody's forcing anybody to stay in anybody's life in 2024. And because people are finding out that we're free, that we don't have to live up on the family like the way people used to tell us, stick together. No, we ain't sticking together if you treating me bad. If you intimidating me and harassing me, I ain't sticking with you. More people are learning that now. That they don't have to put up with the threats from family members. The threatened, I'll tell your business. I'll let everybody know who you are. Another example of that is, say like... For instance, now there may be some preachers out here that, you know, they may be real about their preaching. And then there's some out here we know they're straight up hypocrites. But that don't give family members the right to say, well, I'll let everybody know who you really is. I'm going to tell who you really is and what you really do. I know exactly what you do behind closed doors. I'm finna expose you, I'm fin I, and then I'm gonna get your records, and I'm gonna show everybody that you got alcohol in your system, you got drugs in your system, but you up here preaching. 
No, the family don't got a right to expose that information on a person, even if that is what they're doing. Now, I just gave you another, that, that was an example of how it's like when the hypocrite is doing it for real and you want to tell somebody, no, you don't have a right to tell nobody. That's that man life. That's that woman life. You don't have a right. And if you do, they have a right to come after you and your pockets. They have a right to do that because you should have stayed in your own lane. All right, y'all, that's what I have for y'all, and I'm finna get up off of here. But thank y'all so much for listening to little old me talking about Bo Jackson and how he won his lawsuit. Yes, way to go. I I'm, I don't care. I'm happy about it. I'm happy about it. <laughs> and um, I hope this is a lesson to families. Mind your business. If you're going to be around each other and you don't like what each other do, Hey, then don't be around each other. If you're bitter and you're jealous because one got more than the other, then go out there and work for it. Go go put your plan together. Put your plan in operation. Start moving your feet one in front of the other. You're not entitled to somebody else's money, to their emotions, to their health. You're not entitled to none of that. You're not entitled to the directions that they choose to go in their life. Even if they are a failure, you're not even entitled to come up and be like, you're a failure, you're a failure. That's not your business. That's where they at in life. You got to walk to, you got to get the speck up out of your own eye before you start judging somebody else. All right, y'all. So look, don't forget to like and share. And um, don't forget to give me some hearts, y'all. You do know on the Spreaker app, y'all can give me hearts. You can chat back with me in the chat box. I would love to hear from y'all and what y'all think about these topics that I have been talking about. Because I told y'all, I'm taking the focus off me. Not going to keep the focus on me. So that, I don't know, I just feel like I'm outgrowing some things. That's what I feel like. And I want to, you know, follow the growth. That's all it is. I'm following the growth. And, oh yeah, about last night, y'all know I came on here last night and I was telling y'all that uh, something happened, allergic reaction, and I got hit with lasers. I'm doing fine. Um, as soon as I took the medication, by 3.30 a.m., everything started going down. I started feeling better and I was able to go to sleep. And thank God for that because it, it did hurt. But thank y'all, those of you who got up to sit and hear me talk and, you know, you prayed for me and you probably was like, God, hear that girl mine. But thank you anyway. All right, y'all. Peace, love, and happiness. Have a great night.